welcome to Mod Pod with Fuka Naka, a podcast that celebrates the strength and pulse of the luxury market. And now, here's your host, Vanessa Fukunaga. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mod Pod with Fukunaga. And today's special guest star is Mr. Peter Bowling. Welcome. Who is? Vanessa, a pleasure. <laughs> I'm trying to say hello and also try to get your big title out because <laughs> we're about to talk about your big long history of experience in the hotel world. Yeah. Crazy. I, well, I just thought actually uh, yesterday, I thought when we first met, you'd been here about two weeks <laughs> and we had dinner together in Bar Espiritu in Cabo San Lucas. Yes. And uh, I, I hadn't thought about it for a long, long time and I thought, wow, where have the years gone? Isn't that crazy? And all these memories that we have, that we have in mm -hmm. this beautiful location. Los Cabos is amazing and right now today we're actually in a special location we are in Viceroy Los Cabos where Mr. Bowling is our regional manager for Viceroy Los Cabos. Yes until other hotels open in the area or the region but I'm very happy to be here all the time you know I love I love the destination mm -hmm. so uh, for me it's a joy and it was a joy to come back two and a half years ago um, as, as we know it's about the people. It is. And. Uh, two and a half years when I came back, I felt at home from the second I arrived. Oh, that's yeah, nice. Exactly. I mean, this is an amazing location. Normally we're in, uh, you know, we're filming all over the place. I just did some remotely in, in um, Mexico City. Right. But today with this backdrop, this is beyond. Look at how close and I can hear the waves. Yes. Can you hear we them? I can hear the ocean. You I can, can hear and we can feel the breeze. You can feel the breeze. This is yeah. amazing. And also for the, our audience out there, you can actually, there's a signature scent that I noticed as soon as I walked through the lobby and onto the elevator. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. We work with the Romeria. Uh -huh. uh, I first met them. They have a base in Mexico City. They're amazing families, a privately owned company. And um, they have various uh, exclusive stores around Mexico. Um, and I met them about 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. And we had a concept to create a signature scent for Viceroy Los Cabos. And so we've done something with salt air, oh. fig, an orange. Wow. Yeah, so we have candles, we have room infusers, we have um, essence, mm -hmm. uh, and we've now done the private label with it. So uh, actually, the large incense we've lit on the balcony here, you, can, you can smell it wafting through. Yes, yeah. but it's subtle. It's very subtle, yeah. yeah. It's clean. It is, and it, but it, it still lingers. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, the, they don't have synthetic anything, so it's all made in grass mm -hmm. and then actually finished in Mexico. Mm. So wow. yeah, it's been a pleasure working with them and we, we sell it in all our outlets, but then we also do uh, signature turndown uh, amenities as well. Okay. So when you take things home with you, it reminds you of your experience here and hopefully entices you to come by. <laughs> That's nice. What a nice touch. Yes. Now, so we're sitting in Viceroy Los Cabos. Tell me, I mean, I know, but for our audience out there, how long have you been here in Viceroy? Uh, I came back to the Baja uh, two years and four months ago. Not to be exact. Yeah, I was exact, exact <laughs> because it's, time has gone so quickly. Uh -huh. You know, and, and I had seven weeks here, of course, then the virus came. So we, we closed yes. down for five months. Mm -hmm. uh, but we used it as a time to relaunch mm -hmm. and to really look at each detail mm -hmm. and to fine tune. Mm -hmm. And on July the 23rd, when we opened, which is nearly two years ago now, uh, it was the new beginning. And we used it as a positive time. Mm -hmm. And we used it as a time to look back on what the hotel had achieved in a prior world, prior life, mm -hmm. and what we could do to create magic. And uh, since then, uh, the hotel's gone, or the resort's gone from strength to strength. Um, but it's got a very you know, a signature style to the hotel. Yes, it does. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> something I'm a great believer in is caring. and. Um, even though we have a modern building with the modern architecture, mm -hmm. um, in, in certain ways that could be quite stark and it could be quite you know, minimalist, mm -hmm. which the building cold. is. Cold. Cold, right? Uh -huh. uh, but even though the design is so beautiful and so minimalist, we've added little touches that, cr that have softened the resort. Mm -hmm. And um, you can feel that wherever you walk now through the property. Mm -hmm. I can, because you know I've been here. Exactly. Before this was even built. Well, I came. I came with you yes. nine years ago, and we drove around on a on a on a on a muddy on, dirt. on a dirty field, <laughs> and you showed me this amazing brochure, and we had a video and the yes, whole thing. Yes, that's so crazy. And nine years later, here we are, and nine years sitting later. in the in the block that we were talking to mm -hmm. about, 
Uh, that day. Yeah, that day. Crazy, yes. crazy, crazy, crazy. So tell us a little bit about Viceroy. Right. Viceroy is a, is a boutique company. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 16 hotels around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the head office is in California, in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very small corporate group, which is what I like. Mm -hmm. And the overall ambiance of, of what you feel in mm -hmm. this hotel, it comes clearly from the COO, the CEO of the company, mm -hmm. uh, Bill Walsh and Mike Walsh. Um, and it's just about, you know, you can be real, you can be honest, you can be sincere, you can talk openly, uh -huh. which in this day and age is very important. <laughs> yes. And to have people around me that also can feel the same. So when I joined, I joined for because of actually Viceroy, because of the, the top people in the company. That's nice. But also I was blessed to meet the Mexican owners as well, mm -hmm. um, who were a wonderful family. And so I always say to run a world-class resort, and mm -hmm. I've run a couple of them, uh, you have to have everything in harmony. And I feel the, fir the most important thing in that first instance mm -hmm. is to have ownership who are really in sync with the management company yep. and working in harmony together. Mm -hmm. And then they bring in the right managing director or general manager or whoever they bring along mm -hmm. um, that can then put that together. And then that's how we go forward. In harmony. I like that. And that, that's really important. Mm -hmm. That yeah. really, really is. Yes. And Viceroy Los Cabos has what? Tell me how many rooms. We have also yes, have ownership here. There's 196 rooms. You know, we, we have uh, full ownership, mm -hmm. as you're aware, uh, with one bedroom, two bedroom apartments, uh, three bedroom casitas, four bedroom villas. Mm -hmm. We've just uh, actually, we're going to open in the next few weeks a five bedroom villa on mm -hmm. the beach, uh, which we're oh. going to rent which can be rented as a three bedroom or a five bedroom uh, unit. Mm -hmm. All the casitas and villas have rooftop pools, mm -hmm. uh, which are wonderful. So you have your own space. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a five bedroom penthouse as well with a large pool on the roof. It's to die. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things for different opportunities for different people because, you know, we have, when I first came, I thought, is this going to be a young, trendy hotel? Mm -hmm. Uh, and is that going to be the DNA of the place? Mm -hmm. But it's not. And it's really a lifestyle experience. So we have young people, older people. We have groups of guys traveling together, groups of ladies traveling together. We have multi-generational grandparents buying uh, villas and casitas here mm -hmm. to bring their whole families with them. Um, it's really proved to be a, a very diverse clientele. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I used to run Capella, mm -hmm. um, which is now, of course, the Waldorf, and, and six years at one and only. And they had, you know, different styles of clientele, I thought. Mm -hmm. But after the two and a half years nearly here, it's really very similar. It's the same. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's people that want a quality experience that what, one, what they want when they want, mm -hmm. uh, and it has to be done in a very caring way, and we're the ones as the, as the hosts making sure that they're given the warm welcome. Mm -hmm. As we all realize, you can stay anywhere. If you come and stay here, you can stay in any hotel in, in Cabo. There's many choices, in, in, um, and I always think that people come to a hotel the first time, mm -hmm. and the second time they come home. Oh, I like that. Which is really important. Yes. And I can say clearly now, we've welcomed many people home in the last two years, and they're coming time and time and time again. And we didn't have a repeat clientele, mm -hmm. and now every day there are repeat guests coming back. That's so good. Yeah. And you mentioned, yes, you worked at, you've been 30 years in the industry. Yes. So yeah. from Capella to one and only. Mm. Tell, tell me a little bit about right. how you got started into the yes. hotel industry. Yeah. Well, of course, I'm, I'm English with this accent, and you never lose your accent. Hello, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yes, you don't sound you never, like you're speaking Spanish. No, you never lose way. your accent. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I, I, I started off at a very young age in the UK, uh -huh. and I started my after hotel school in country house hotels in England, okay. never thinking how I was going to work abroad. And I was very set in England. I was very happy. Okay. Uh, no vision of, of living away. And then one night in this beautiful country house in England, <laughs> uh -huh. it was raining outside. Uh -huh. And uh, there was a beautiful roaring log fireplace, an Adam style fireplace with roaring logs. And there was Vivaldi playing on the music system. <laughs> and there was candles everywhere. Uh -huh. And I was in my dinner suit. And the phone rang. 
and I went to the phone, the lady passed me the phone and she said, uh, there's a gentleman called Jack Schneider on the phone mm -hmm. and Jack Schneider was the top guy who owned the best recruitment agency in England. Okay. He was French and he used to come for lunch to my previous hotel and he, I'd got to know him. Mm -hmm. And he called me one Saturday evening and said, Peter, we have the perfect job for you. Mm. Would you like to go to London on Monday morning to be interviewed uh -huh. at Brown's Hotel? Uh -huh. And I looked through the window and it was dark and it was cold and it was raining. And I said, yes, OK, I'll go. Never thinking anything was going to turn around. I, you know, I was set in my ways in the UK. I was fine. I was, in, I was only 25 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to Brown's Hotel. I got the train from the little station in Kent, mm -hmm. with my umbrella, and it was pouring <laughs> down, right? I, I jump into a, a black cab in London. Uh -huh. I go to Brown's Hotel just off Bond Street. You may know the hotel. Mm -hmm. I had a three hour interview wow. uh, with this English guy, actually. And uh, he said to me, We want to offer you the job. And I remember going to a public phone box, because in those days there was no telephones, uh -huh. right? And calling my, my parents and you know calling with putting a two p in the slot machine, <laughs> and saying I've just been offered a position. Oh my god! And they said where? And I said I'm going to be on a private 300 acre island, off the coast of Antigua, called Jumbie Bay. And I didn't realize, of course, that's it was one of the most prestigious resorts in the Caribbean. I mean, it still is actually. Exactly. And I was I went there for five years. I got married on the island in 1988. Oh, I didn't uh, know you guys got married we, there. Kathy and I got married on, on Jumbie Bay. Oh, that's But nice. then 14 years later, I went back as the managing director for Rosewood, uh -huh. and I spent five more years there. So that island holds a, meant a lot to us. Yeah. And actually, my wife is still doing a little project there as well. So it's, uh, it, we have, we've never let go. It's always, it's always been in our life over the past 30 years. Wow. I can't believe you've been in the industry for 30 years, but you've had such a varied career. Yes. You know, from, like you said, in Antigua to yeah. where else? I've, well, I've been back a couple of times to different place, the mm -hmm. same place. So mm -hmm. Barbados, I had nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I left um, Jumbie the first time, mm -hmm. I went to the U.S. to a place called St. Michael's, where I have my house now, mm -hmm. on the Chesapeake Bay. Nice. And uh, I opened a hotel called the Inn at Perry Cabin mm -hmm. for Sir Bernard Ashley. And in those days, Laura Ashley shops were all over the world. And of course, Laura Ashley went off when he died and, and everything else. But uh, I opened a hotel for him. Oh, and wow. uh, I had two years there. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I went back to the Caribbean and I went to Barbados. Mm -hmm. And I had five years in Barbados. And then I had two years in Mustique at the Cotton House, which was another private island. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to Jumbie Bay. And then I went back to Barbados. So <laughs> even though 21 years in the Caribbean, uh -huh. uh, sounds like a long time it was but it went so quickly because I had nine years in Barbados mm -hmm. nine years on Jumbie Bay and just over two years in Mustique so that was 20 years so um, wow time goes quickly when you're having fun that's nice yeah? that's really nice yes could you ever growing up in in England have imagined that you would at this point in your life be living in Los Cabos Mexico no <laughs> well, no, I could. I would never have imagined because mm -hmm. I, I thought my life was actually set in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And what happened was I, I had eight weeks in San Ysidro Ranch, mm -hmm. and um, I was asked to go just to oversee the the renovation for San Ysidro. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, I had a phone call from an agency in Florida, um, and would I go for an interview for a new hotel company that was just being launched? Mm -hmm. And had I heard of Horse Schultze, the founder of Ritz Carlton? Wow. And I said, no, I don't know Horse Schultze. They <laughs> said, well, his top guy wants to meet you in New York. Mm -hmm. So I, they flew me from San Ysidro Ranch to the Four C, well, to the, Wal uh, the Waldorf, actually, in New York. Mm -hmm. And then I met with their HR VP for Capella. Mm -hmm. And we had a long three hour lunch at the Four Seasons. And I went back to San Ysidro Ranch. And then they asked me to go to Auburn University in Atlanta, in Georgia, mm -hmm. for another interview. This was before I went back to Jumbie Bay. It was a <laughs> and um, I went back, I got the job, I resigned from Jumbie Bay, mm -hmm. and then they told me where the job was, because I had no idea. And I thought it was going to be this exotic place. Okay. And I thought it was going to be like in Bali or the Seychelles or <laughs> maybe Australia. I don't know, Australia somewhere. Mm -hmm. And they said, we'd like to offer you the job. And my wife, who you know, mm -hmm. was in the house, because we were on Jumbie Bay, 
and I put the hand over the phone and I said, darling, they're going to offer me the job. I, and I said, she said, okay. So they said, it's in Ireland, in oh Ireland. Oh my gosh. And I said, oh what? Because I never thought of going back to live in England, Ireland, wh wherever, you know. <laughs> and uh, I put the hand over the phone uh -huh. and I said, darling, I said, it's going to be in Ireland. She said, if it's Cork, it's yes. If it's Dublin, it's no. <gasps> Because her mother, uh, you know, her mother was Irish, mm -hmm. and she spent many years as a young girl in Southern Ireland. Okay. Which, and she loved it. Mm -hmm. So I said, "Where is it?" They said, "It's in Cork." So I, I said, "She went, yeah." So <laughs> that's how I left the Caribbean. Oh my goodness. And then I went to um, launch the first Capella Hotel mm -hmm. near, in Cork, near in Jameson, near Middleton, where mm -hmm. the Jameson Whiskey Distillery is. Wow. And I had two years there launching Capella, mm -hmm. and then the recession came. And when the recession came 14 years ago, the only hotel that Capella had fully funded with the Diaz Rivera family in Cabo uh -huh. was Capella Pedriga. And so they asked me to fly here, and my wife flew with me. We had a big cocktail party with uh, Monica and Manuel Diaz Rivera, mm. uh, with, with um, Leslie and Juan. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a wonderful evening, and as we're driving down the mountain to go to Casa Quay, which is on Pedregal, uh -huh. which was his grandfather's house, they, we got out of the car, and he said, "We'd like to, we'd like to have you come and uh, create a home here. We'd like you to come and launch this hotel." So we went back to Ireland, and mm -hmm. then, unbeknownst to me, I was gonna, it was gonna change the rest of my <laughs> life, and so I, I had five years. Um, opening that hotel. Mm -hmm. I loved working for Capella. It was a very special time. We got the number one in Travel and Leisure magazine. We got number one in Condé Nast magazine. We got a lot of accolades in mm -hmm. that hotel. And then out of the blue, I had a call from Pomia. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> so yeah, never, you never think what's going to happen along no. the way. But you've just got to put yourself out there mm -hmm. and be open to opportunities and really always make sure that you choose the people that suit your energy and and I that like suit your yep. suit your style mm -hmm. because you know it, it's there's many there's many different opportunities but you've got to choose the right ones what do you think your style is um i like to be able to create mm -hmm. i like to feel like i can make a difference mm -hmm. um, i like to be involved with the people that work with me and create teams mm -hmm. and, and really value what people do mm -hmm. um, and really respect everybody's potential and create a family. You can, you, can run, you can run a hotel, but you can't force people to do things. You can give guidance, mm -hmm. but if people don't want to do it for themselves, it's impossible to run a world-class place mm -hmm. because it's all on the detail. So it's all on... And coming from the heart. Coming, f coming f sincere, you know, may we help yes. you, may we offer you, may Taking we... Taking pride in your exactly. work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. May we escort you. Is there anything else we can do for you? Mm -hmm. um, thank you for staying with us. We look forward to welcoming you home next time. I love that. Yeah, so it's, that's always worked. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's life-changing experiences along the way. You know, we have hurricanes and we have situations, no, and we, we have, don't have we have viruses, and we, you know, <laughs> we, we have life life situations. Everybody yes. has to deal with life situations. But it's how you react. And it's how you turn a negative mm -hmm. to a positive. Yep. And you can't do it on your own. True. On your own, you you're nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I said that when I took over the last two hotels. You know, mm -hmm. if, if if I don't have the support of the people. I am nothing to, to this hotel. Mm -hmm. I can have the creativity, I can have the visualization of how we make it better, but if, if I don't have the people's support to be able to do it with me together, mm -hmm. uh, we would never achieve it. Mm -hmm. So it's a team thing, and I explain it as a circle. It's a, it's a bouncing ball, and you have to have everybody in that, in that circle in harmony. Mm -hmm. And I, people, my, my team have heard this, but you know, you, each department is a village and each village has a mayor. So the leader of the restaurant is the mayor of the village, <laughs> and the villagers are the people in his village or mm -hmm. her village, and mm -hmm. they individually have to take care of their villagers. The whole resort are individual villages that make a town. Mm -hmm. So the reason I can sleep at night with peace of mind <laughs> is I know that all the villages are in harmony. I like that. Yeah, and sometimes a little village will need assistance. So. Mm -hmm. Every village has to work together because in any hotel, there are thousands of transactions every day 
thousands. And we only hear a certain management people if there's a problem or a little situation of how we turn it around. Mm -hmm. It's usually when there's a problem. Problem, right? <laughs> but there are, there are so many positive things and uh -huh. transactions. I mean, my, my doorman here, and I've had amazing doormen throughout my life, mm -hmm. my career. I can honestly say that my doormen are totally and utterly amazing. They are. Thank you, Vanessa. They are. Because you've come in here many times. I love them. And they love each other mm -hmm. and they love their mayor, they love their village mm -hmm. and they're proud. And so every guest that checks into this hotel can feel the energy of, of these guys. And so as they're walking around explaining the restaurants, explaining the spa, explaining the location, mm -hmm. they're creating that warmth as soon as a person, the guests arrive in the hotel. It's so true. Yeah. it's. Uh, and something comes to mind, it's just something very basic that I'm going to say to you, yeah. but uh, my first day here I was asked to meet 400, the 400 staff, and mm -hmm. I, we did it in two stages, 200 and 200. And I was staying here for the first seven weeks, and I'm walking to the meeting, nobody hardly knew me, I'd met four people, mm -hmm. and I'm walking around the pathway and I see this lovely lady, this maid, and she's cleaning this fire escape, this, this piece of glass, and okay. she's cleaning it, and she's cleaning it like this, and she's <laughs> looking, and she's standing back, and she's looking at this glass, and it's shining, this glass is shining. Uh -huh. And I stood there, and I thought, this is what it's all about. It's about the detail. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned it when I had my first 200-person meeting, five minutes later, I said, could this lady stand up? And can I just say that this is what it's all about? It's not about a corporate manual. Mm -hmm. It's not about coming out with all this jargon of how we should and if we could and all these 150 pages. <laughs> of, um, <laughs> it's about being sincere, mm -hmm. being nice, being honest, but caring. Mm -hmm. So if you are responsible for the gardens, then this is, why the, this is why the gardens here are all now raked to perfection because every day they're raking them mm -hmm because they want to do it, not because I'm saying you have to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you have 400 people aligned and they're, ha they're having fun with it, mm -hmm. then it, it pays back. And taking pride in their work. Exactly. I mean, that's just, uh, we all should, and yeah. I hope we all do. <laughs> yeah, well, it makes you appreciate, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, you, know, I, you know, we've all lived in the US and mm -hmm. in, in different places, in Europe and everywhere. Mm -hmm. But this is why I came back. You know, I went to Beverly Hills for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. It was always my dream, by the way. Mm -hmm. when I was, well, you did it. I did it. Uh -huh. I, I, you met me there. I know, when we were there. <laughs> we had drinks there. <laughs> did we, we had, did it, no, we didn't have dinner. Did we? I don't We'd remember. Have to, we had something, because you think you were going out. But, uh -huh. I, but I remember being with you we in, the in the hotel. We were in the hotel. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was 17 years old, I was with a good friend of mine in the UK, and, and we, had a, we had a list of things on our bucket list that we would like to do in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And one of them was me. I want to live in Beverly Hills. It was on my list. And you did it. And when I used to live in Capella, Pedregal, uh -huh. I used to drive up the mountain there. After being in Cabo, we drove up the mountain. I always called it arriving in Bel Air. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, living in Pedregal uh -huh. and going down to the... And so when I had the opportunity, you know, it was a great opportunity. I enjoyed every minute because it was a really amazing role. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm used to resorts and I'm used to getting joy every day. Mm -hmm. And when you say that and you really mean it, like you get out of bed every morning and you look forward to coming here. Yes. Or wherever you I mean, look at this backdrop. <laughs> right. It's and, ridiculous. <laughs> right. And, but I look for, and then I look forward every night to thinking about what we're going to do the following day. Mm -hmm. We, as mm -hmm. I always say, we. But every morning when I, when I come in, from the security man smiling and waving to the doorman, to the mm -hmm. concierge, to the front desk, to every single person, it, it's a big team effort. Mm -hmm. And so I've got no regrets about making that decision to come back. I turned down a couple of jobs actually in the US. Oh. Yeah, and I was doing some consultancy in the UK. Mm -hmm. And um, I went on my kayak actually on the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> okay. And um, I was on my kayak and the Ospreys and the, little, and the, and the beautiful place and peace. Uh huh. And I had a chance to go to a UK company for that to be their COO. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm on the kayak and I'm thinking, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I, I want to find, I want to run a hotel mm -hmm. with people that I really want to be with on a daily basis. And I don't want to be a consultant going into one project and pulling out of the next project and leaving after everything has been achieved and then mm -hmm. you move on. Mm -hmm. 
and I remember pulling the pushing the kayak to the side of the, my lawn uh -huh. and walking up to the lawn and opening the door and saying to my wife, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing it. And she, Kathy's supported me for the last 34 years, you know, she's been, she said, don't worry. Amazing. Thank you. She said, that's good. Don't worry about it. She, <laughs> she said something great is going to happen. Oh, she's so positive, isn't she? Yeah, she thank that's you. Wonderful. She is, yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, the great thing did happen because uh, six weeks later, I was signing the contract for this hotel. And uh, the nice thing was they, I signed, they sent it to me on Christmas Eve, Aww. which will be nearly three years ago, and they mm -hmm. said, Peter, it was a pleasure meeting you in Washington, D.C., because I met them in Washington, and mm -hmm. flying to Mexico City and getting to know everybody. But we want you to have a great holiday. We want you to have a great festive season. So we want you to have, receive your contract on Christmas Eve. And I thought that was That's very nice. They could have waited, couldn't they, until yes. January? Exactly. And so uh, when that I... It sets the stage, though, it right? Did. Don't you think that sets the tone where you it just did. mentioned that, you know, everybody working in harmony? It and did. It does and take I, ownership, management, directors, the whole team. It takes a, it takes a village. It takes everyone. Yeah. Everyone. And we have goals. And you've got to set realistic goals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been through many things, all of us. Every hotel, every business has been through many things here. Um, but when you do it with fun, mm -hmm. and when you visualize it, Mm -hmm. Magic happens. It's true. Just like I saw, which I haven't seen yet, I was walking by because it, this, with all of the surrounding water in the hotel. Yes. I know the hotel from the beginning. We right. know from the beginning. So I'm looking around and I'm thinking, wow, all the water looks really light. And I see it's a subtle detail. I remember you telling me once, I'm going to come in, I'm going to change everything or turn it upside down. I'm going to make little subtle touches, little subtle yes. changes. Yeah. And this subtle change is amazing. Yes. It brightened up everything. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at the surround, that's, it used to be called Maradentro, now right. it's Viceroy, which is the water inside, the sea inside. Yes. And the way the water looks now with the, the bottom of, yes, you know, beautiful. bottom of And now light. we're going to, in a future stage, uh, paint the bottom section also in the same color as well. So the, the oh. whole, it's, it's all going to be blue all the it's way beautiful. through. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And so when did you do that? This happened, well, you know, we closed for a period mm -hmm. uh, this year for, say, five weeks. Yeah. Uh, you know, then we opened for the amazing wedding that I, I talked about it with you, which was yes. amazing. And then we did... Um, uh, after the wedding, we did HBO with uh, Waterworld. Nice. And uh, they're gonna, it's going to be uh, shown on HBO in July. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's, uh, yeah, that's good for the hotel. It's going to be a showcase of the building, the architecture and everything. So, oh, that's fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Vanessa, I've just realized, I, I'm so rude, I haven't <laughs> offered you a drink or anything. It's time. Isn't it time? <laughs> it is How time. How about a couple of coconuts? Co Vice Foilos Carbos Coconuts. Are you calling us a couple of coconuts? I don't know. Let's, let's have a, let's have a co I'm let's, for let's, coconut. Let's have a coconut. I love it. <laughs> Oscar's here. <laughs> oh, of course. Coconuts. Gracias. Enjoy. Enjoy. Gracias. Thank you so much. How nice. clever. Lovely and cold as well. Okay, so I'd let everybody get a little. Visual of that. This is fabulous. Enjoy. Salut. Salut. <laughs> Let me taste. Mm. Mm. This Delicious. is heaven. Delicious. Are we are we allowed to tell people that you know this is working for us? This is work. This is the it, office. It, this is work. This is, this is work, isn't it? <laughs> it doesn't feel like someone work. has to do it though. Someone has to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And I do I do tell people you know when I'm on a Zoom call or something like that. Yeah. You know, and their backdrop is their office or their house or their, right. you know, wherever. And we've got the Sea of Cortez or cold handmade, you know, coconuts with fresh coconut water. Yeah. It's a pretty good life. It's fantastic, actually. It's a yeah. pretty, it it's is. a pretty good it is. life. It is. Yes. So tell me a little bit about when you were growing up. You mentioned, obviously, you grew up in, in the UK. Yes. What was your very first job? Very, very first job. Right. My first, first job. Was what? Was um, I don't think I know this. No, it was working on a market stall when I was 11 years old. 11? Are you allowed yeah. to work that young? Yes. Okay. On a Saturday. Okay. <laughs> to earn some, you know, pocket money. You okay. Know. And it was for a Jewish family who had a material stall on a market in my hometown. Mm-hmm. 
and I worked there for about a year. They, I really liked them, mm -hmm. and I really learned a lot from that, that couple. Mm -hmm. um, but my first restaurant job was uh, when I was 12 years old, and I, I went to knock on the door of my local restaurant, mm -hmm. and I said, hello, I'm Peter Bowling, and this gentleman said, I'm Mr. Foster, I own the restaurant. <laughs> okay. and, I, and I said, I, well, I'd like to come and work for you. And he said, well, how old are you? I said, I'm, I'm 12. <laughs> and he said, okay. And I, I went to work for him. And um, I worked part time. And mm -hmm. then I worked in the summer holidays and everything. But it's what got me involved with cooking, serving, camera hospitality. hospitality, people, uh -huh. uh, energy of the people around me. Mm -hmm. And from that, I went to hotel school. And, Did and that make you want to go yes, to hotel school? Yes, it was uh -huh. just the natural progression. I'd, I'd, Whereas my friends, I mean, I used to go out and have fun with my friends after I'd worked in the restaurant, mm -hmm. but it was really more for me about working, enjoying, camaraderie, achieving, sense of achievement. Mm -hmm. uh, That's nice. <laughs> yeah, so I, I did that and then it, the natural progression and then I, I always wanted to work in high-end places. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get joy out of quality. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was about more the quality of what we were serving, the attention to detail, mm -hmm. um, the level of clientele in, in England in those days. Um, so then I had the six years in these country house hotels and uh, that was a really great training, mm -hmm. uh, living near London, um, but it's still in the countryside, but very high end clients, you know, quality of food, mm -hmm. uh, attention to detail, all the things that we've discussed today mm -hmm. uh, started at a very early age for me mm -hmm. and uh, it's just carried through that. So Peter, <laughs> we're sitting here in Los Cabos, Mexico, and now you've invited me to tea time. Exactly. I love it. But it's, it's what you call tea by the sea. <laughs> That's the new thing. That could be the new thing, couldn't it? Yes. Exactly. I love it. I'm telling you, you should start yeah. a tea time yes. here in Cabo. Yes, exactly. It's on the list. But, you know, I'm, I think I'm waiting just a little bit more. I'm just yes. waiting for a couple of surprises. But watch out because there will be tea. <laughs> watch out, and people. <laughs> watch out because there will be tea. And my, my first guest is going to be you. I love it. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, tea by the sea. Exactly. I love it. You heard it here first, folks, by the way. <laughs> okay, so what are we having? Tell me a little bit about well, what tea time means in for you growing up. Yeah, well, high tea, you know, people, uh, society people, especially in London and in the countryside, mm -hmm. uh, would enjoy tea time. And this would be served between three or five. Mm -hmm. And it would be a time where they could get all their lovely china out and have all their <laughs> wonderful staff serve them this beautiful high tea. Mm -hmm. And it was a way of the, the ladies of that, that period, the Victorian times, mm -hmm. where they could enjoy each other's company and, and not have a lunch or a dinner, but enjoy their beautiful homes. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, in London, when the Ritz first opened and Claridge's and the Connaught and all these amazing, the Savoy and all these wonderful hotels, yeah. The tradition, of course, still carries on, uh, but in the in the days gone by, uh, it was really a, a wonderful thing that the Brits, re, you know, launched, mm -hmm. uh, and of course their tie in with India and Ceylon and all the tea uh, industry mm -hmm. it was a way of uh, showcasing the beautiful teas of the day. Well, it's wonderful. Shall we? Please. And while we're having tea, yes. we're going to start our Mod Pod experience. We are. And you. Folks, he doesn't even know what we're going to do. So, are you ready? I'm ready. It's a quiz. Okay. Okay, so here we go. So, uh, let's put together our tea. I'm going to have a little bit of lemon while we Perfect. start. Okay, I'll have a little taste. Okay. Is it good? What kind of tea do we have? English breakfast tea. Oh, perfect. Yes. Let me try. Mm. Lovely. Okay, here we go. So, in honor. <laughs> Of where you grew up. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hold I gotta get to the right questions. Here we go. So this is what we're going to call a little touch of home. Okay. Okay. Yes. So it's a quiz. Um, let's start with question number one. Name four well-known British musicians or bands. Rolling Stones, The Beatles. Hold on to see these people are on my list. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin? Oh, yeah. okay. Uh huh. Um, one more. Uh, oh, come T Rex. On. Who? T Rex. The dinosaur? No, T Rex, <laughs> T -Rex was a guy called Mark Boland and he was amazing. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. One of his albums was called The Electric Warrior. He was amazing, but 
yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I also have your Elton John. Elton John, David Bowie. Yes. I saw Elton John in concert one time. Yeah. Fabulous. Yes. Spice Girls. Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. <laughs> So funny. <laughs> we, could, we could have 20 on this list. We could have 20 on this list. So we have British actor Daniel Craig, who was, as we like to say, hashtag on the cover. Exactly. Of Double Ocean Blue. Blue. Exactly. Yeah. It was our 28th edition. What was the name of his last James Bond movie? Oh. Daniel Craig is last and, and James Bond. It was, and, it was, and I, it was a new one. And I haven't it was the new one that I came out yeah, after and COVID. And I haven't seen it. And I've been here all the time, <laughs> most of the time. Uh -huh. And I haven't seen it. Uh, so I don't know. No time to die. No time to die. Okay, I'm sorry. You know. That's okay. I've been working too hard. <laughs> you <laughs> have been working. That's all right. <laughs> Doing tea time. Okay. All right. Let's partake. I, I'll ask questions while you while right, you have okay. your tea. Name two. F this is. I would not necessarily. I know a few of these. Name two famous streets or squares in British TV soaps. Um, Barclay Square. Uh huh. Harley Street. We'll trust him. <laughs> yeah. Wal you, you could make Wal something Wal up. Wal Wal Walpole Street. Okay. Blenheim Place. Uh huh. Okay. Um, Would you like me to name a few that I don't know? Yes. Okay. Coronation Street. Oh, Coronation Street, of course. Well, that's a fuss. Albert East End, Square. Albert Square, East Enders. Uh huh. There you go. And Main Street. Right. Okay. Okay. So, and this I, I meant to ask you also is this year marks the Queen's Platinum Jubilee yes, of 70, 70 years. years. Exactly. So, question for you how many rooms in total are in her place of residence at Buckingham Palace? Do you know? Uh, 350. Great guess, but the answer is a jaw dropping 775 rooms. Right. Isn't that interesting? It's amazing, isn't it? Did you watch uh, the celebration? I, I did. I was in the U.S. actually, and I watched a lot of it. Actually, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It was nice. And what was your kind of take on the whole thing? You know, being well, a the Queen has been with us for forever, hasn't she? Mm -hmm. In all our lives, even our grandparents, my my grandparents, you know, the same age as the Queen, and she's an amazing lady, and she's seen the country through thick and through thin, mm -hmm. and we're all uh, very very proud of the Queen in England. That's and, nice. Um, yeah, I, th I think she's been a wonderful lady and she's uh, been a, a, a true committed, dedicated, wonderful monarch to the British people. That's a lovely way to say that. All right, so name four well-known British authors. Agatha Christie. Oh, I didn't know she was. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The Bronte Sisters. Uh-huh. Enie Blyton. Oh my gosh. Okay, keep going. I won't even look at my, I won't look at my notes because it's <laughs> going to name the whole library. Okay. And, um, well, oh, uh, the lady who wrote. Uh, uh, well, I know uh, you're going to uh, say uh, it. Uh, 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 Harry Potter. Harry Potter. J. K. K. Rowling. Yes. Well done. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is just really whatever you want to say. What is your favorite British saying, expression, or phrase, slang? What would be a favorite one? Well, we don't say have a nice day, do we? <laughs> we don't say have a nice day. Uh, no. Um, May we help you? Okay. Um, uh, we're very. We just say good morning and how are you and is there, mm -hmm. you know, is there anything we can do for you? May we help you? Mm -hmm. um, but you just say it with an accent. <laughs> <laughs> and you uh, know my impersonations are the worst. Or how about no? This is one. What? Would you like a cuppa? A cuppa. A cuppa. <gasps> if you say would you like a cuppa, oh. or would you like a brew? Is that a it means, would you like a cup of tea? A brew is tea? Yes. Yeah, so oh. in England, in, in a lot of people, they say, would you like a brew? Or how about a cuppa? OK. And it means, would you like a cup of tea? I like that. All right, I'm learning every day. All right. What is the longest running musical in London? Do you know that? Uh, the longest running play was Mousetrap. OK. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was, say, Phantom of the Opera now. Close. I would uh, say close or, just because. Or Cats. Or uh, Les. Uh, Les Miserables. Yeah, I've seen it four times, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fabulous. It's fabulous, isn't it? Yes, I saw actually the the musical Chicago yeah. in London. Yeah. Yeah. To die. Yeah, it's fantastic. Beyond. But Les Miserables is amazing. I've I've seen it in New York, but I haven't yeah. seen it in London. Right. Amazing, crazy. So, which is the only village in England with a name ending with an exclamation mark? 
Oh, this is this is interesting. Do you know this? No, I have no idea. Westward Ho. Okay. Have you heard of is that? that? Is that in West Sussex? Oh, Peter, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to check it after after, after our tea. <laughs> you need to Google. After our cuppa, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to go and check where this where this little place is. Okay, I have two more questions for you. Here we go. Oh gosh, here we go. Eight ball, easy peeler, and clockwork tangerine are all British types of what? Clockwork tangerine. So, something called eight ball, something called easy peeler, and another thing called clockwork tangerine. They're all British types of what? This is interesting. Chocolate. Oh, it's so close. It's no, but that was a good guess. Mm -hmm. Beer, craft beer. Okay. Do you drink beer? I very rarely, but of course, when I left all those years ago, there wasn't all these amazing beers that there are now. So oh. you know, that, you know you're, you're asking me a question from someone that probably lived there three or four years ago. Oh, they, you're they, fine. You know, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, just good drink your, drink good, your they're, cuppa. They're good questions, though. They're, aren't they interesting? Yeah, they're a great question. Okay, and then last thing, speaking of chocolate, mm -hmm. in which city was Cadbury Chocolate founded? I could be wrong. I'm probably am wrong. Birmingham. You are right. Oh, wow. that is the way to end it. Here we Fantastic. go. <laughs> now let's give a little toast to our audience. Thank you, Peter Bowling. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. This was an absolute pleasure of mine. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And you can find Mod Pod with Fukunaga on all your favorite podcast channels. Thank you thank again. You. Thanks for listening to Mod Pod with Fukunaga. Follow the episodes on all major podcast platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Amazon, and many more.